Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about installing an awning for this micro camper. This wee roll to be specific. And we're going to place the 13 by 8 awning on this side of the camper. And we'll get it out and uh, have some sunlight to do this. But I'm also going to show the unboxing of it to a degree. And then we'll lay out all the parts. So it arrives in two packages. The awning fabric itself and then the awning. And as I said, this one is a 13 by 8, and so you would get a different size box for this as you would the, some of the smaller awnings or the larger awnings it would depend on there. What you have is the awning tube in here, the arms, some instructions. Then you have uh, this kit and instructions that in, in, included. I've been told that the instructions on this are not very good, but maybe they've updated them. This awning seems to be similar to the Dometic awnings. You have another box of the arms, I would guess. So the tube goes together, it looks like in three pieces, and then the arms themselves and brackets will be in there as well. If I look at the other box of the fabric that came, it's basically folded up nicely. I got a few other parts in here, and I know from working with other awnings that this is uh, the cord that will help tuck it into the track to keep it from pulling out. This should be the pull cord. I believe there's an Allen screw in there that after you put the fabric in on the end. And again, we have some destructions included. Destructions purposefully here included. And they don't look too bad so far, but we've got some other ones on the other side to look at. Uh, this probably to tuck the cord in. And this is the fabric itself, and I opted for the, the black striped fabric, which is really looks a little more similar to a gray. We'll see how that turns out, too. So everything that was in that big box is right here. The support arms for each side, the left and right side, they have the brackets on them for the top. And these brackets right here are the brackets that will clamp down and accept that awning roller itself it comes in three pieces for this size length and uh, it'll be put together and um, then it came with some hardware it came with this bag of hardware okay so far things are making sense these are the two arms the left and the right side and they've got these placed just so where this is the left one, and this handle's on the inside, and that's the right one. The top clamps are already attached. The awning roller itself is in three parts, so we've got that. And then I looked inside the rollers, and I found them inside one of the rollers. So if you can't find them, look inside one of your rollers. Then we've got most of the hardware accounted for. Now, I've heard that this hardware looked cheap and stuff, and that people threw it out. But I don't think this looks too bad so far. This looks like stainless steel. Like I said, I've done a Dometic A&E awning, and this looks so similar. It looks like that it's the same, because everything seems to be made overseas now. Who knows if they're being made by the same factory even. Carefree, Dometic, which is A&E, and then this one named Eleko, Aliko. I've read through all the instructions. I am, at this point, I'm going to put the fabric roller, the awning roller together. It comes in, in this size. It comes in three parts, and they have it fairly well marked. It says down there at the end left, and then the other one says right on the end of it, and that's the middle piece. And the instructions are written in Chinglish, so they leave a little bit to be desired. There's a few misspellings here and there, but I can figure out most of it. As I said, I've installed or fixed my Dometic A&E awnings in the past with other RVs I've had, towables. They're inside, so there's a tube that connects these. So they, they don't ship this as one long tube because it would be too huge. But inside here is the sleeve, and it's temporarily connected with these machine screws. So I'm going to take out that sleeve, and then there's another one on the other side of that. It's actually pretty slick that this sleeve is in there. 
and uh, when I slid it out, it obviously already has the matching CC D would go into D here. We've got a nice little mark right there. Actually, not not bad. Not not very hard to figure out if you're a little bit mechanically inclined. As I said, some of these awnings, if you got a short one, there may only be two pieces. Those went together quite nicely. And then I'm going to repeat the process over here. So when you get all the pieces together, the large pieces together, you'll have on the longer units A, B, and then it says C, D with their stickers. Just line those up. It's pretty easy. And if you don't get the holes lined up at first, loosen up your other two screws and kind of use something to align those screws a little better pieces to go together. You'll see what I mean when you get that far. It can be a little bit challenging, but not much. And so then you want to just roll it around a little bit. Make sure you have all the screws put in and they've provided you a pack of machine screws. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll it around and then you roll it around at least one more time because there's more screws. We've got this 13 foot awning tube fabric tube all together now so I went ahead and went a little bit out of order and put together the roller first I'm glad I did because you had to put together the roller but first one of the first things it said was to go ahead and mount some of this hardware the difficult thing about that and why people complain probably about these directions is because it's very unclear but I'm not going to make any assumptions when drilling holes into the side of my camper. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to go ahead and mock up and lay on the ground the whole assembly. I'm glad I uh, completed the roller and I went ahead and attached the roller to the arms and laid it out. And I'm going to measure point to point. And I am doing something that should be tried and true. And I'm going to lay out the exact assembly on the floor. You could do this in your driveway or whatever and measure point to point. So that's what I've done here. I've just loosely attached the awning where it will go into that hole. And the bracket is up here. And I've made sure that this is roughly per perpendicular to where it's going to be. And then I did the same thing down here. And then I took a tape measure on my brackets that's going to be at the top. And I measured from the center of this hole all the way down to the center of this hole. 157 and three quarters inches to the center of this hole on the top bracket, the outer hole. So my awning will roughly attach somewhere right here and then somewhere right down there at the back. Let me go in here and tell you what. We Roll did me a favor here and they make everything totally accessible so i'm not sure how you'd do this if you got a trailer where you can't access everything you could use some self-tapping bolt but you're going to have to figure that out on your own and then again in the back so i'm going to take those off probably with the hardware that they provide i'm going to estimate where that's going to come in you'll see when i do it so what i did was measured 157 and three quarters in between which will give you my two outside holes. And I made a mark right here. I'm gonna take my square and extend the line down with a Sharpie. And then I'm gonna do the same on the back. That'll give me that outside hole in the bracket. It's great working with one hand. It's gonna line up on a line that I draw and the outside hole will be there. Your trim's going to be different on your camper if you don't have a wee roll. So you'll have to think about any adjustments that you make there. What I did was uh, it was easiest just to lay the tape measure down on the top of mine, my camper, and mark so I could get something pretty exact. And then again, that roller length is going to be different whatever you buy for your awning. And 157 and three quarters between the two outside holes may not be your measurement. You're going to have to lay all that on the ground and get your measurement to be exact. So I feel really good about that this is gonna match up. And then once I get this bracket in here and mounted, and that bracket down there and mounted, 
they'll naturally hang and I can measure but they'll almost mark themselves down there for the bottom brackets I believe it's easiest to go ahead and take this bracket off otherwise you're sitting there trying to mount this up there with the whole assembly and I'm going to take it off not from that screw because that looks like it's almost painted on which will add to the strength but I'm going to take these out okay I'm glad I didn't do this too fast because you have to know what you're screwing into and while this is pretty thick on my camper you need to know what's behind it and I thought I knew what was behind it but then I realized that the inside um, support or aluminum beam that comes down through there is only two inches down so I've got to mount my bracket a little higher than I thought and here's how I knew that of course I have access to mine hopefully you'll figure out what yours is if you have a different one so I've adjusted my plan I've taken the bracket accordingly I actually went and ate dinner and changed my mind and lowered it a little more so mine ends up being maybe almost a quarter of an inch sorry there we go um almost a, somewhere around three sixteenths of an inch or so from the top but the message is this yours is going to be different so figure out what's best for you Okay, I actually had to get a 100 millimeter M6 bolt to go through everything I needed to go through the bracket and a couple others. But uh, the 100 millimeter bolts here, this will square up some when I pull it down from the inside. Haven't done that yet. And I did not detach this other bracket. So I was able just to put that right on there and hang that down to the ground. I've got it temporarily just held up right there. Let's look at it inside. Okay, one thing I did do, well, I removed that wire stay, but one thing I did do was that I left these a little loose. That's because in that bracket out there, you'll have a little room to go left and right on it for your final adjustments. Okay, that one's pulled all into place. This is the bottom bracket. And it attaches by, I'm going to use, in my case, two self-tapping bolts to go right through this thick aluminum. You can go back and forth. Here's this bracket. See how wide those holes are? That means you can take this bracket and shift it that way. Tap it, tap that in or out just a little bit. So you get like a quarter to a half an inch of adjustment left and right. So you've got to get your holes nearly exact like I did with those Sharpie marks. But then you'll have a little bit of adjustment. And that's good because you might need it. Okay, I have attached the bottom bracket. And uh, just be aware that this bottom bracket, the width of it is different than the top bracket. What you have to do is you have to um, measure the arm. I clipped it back in. Um, simply clips in right there. That spring loaded, so you push it and it comes out. Um, so you have to measure the arm. Find the edge. Measure up there how far your edge is to the edge of the camper or trailer that you're putting this on. And then do the same thing with the arm down here. And that's how I located the uh, location. And I left it clipped together and then I took a sharpie and I drew a line there and there and there and there. And then I attached it, in my case, with self-tapping, uh, self-drilling bolts. Because the aluminum is definitely thick enough down here to hold it strong. So all I have to do is do the back one now. And uh, the other thing that I did, maybe while you weren't looking, is that I temporarily attached the roller to both sides. So um, that's easily done with a single bolt. Now, you're definitely going to need two people for that unless you come up with some MacGyver way to hold one in because I have this in my basement garage I was able to hang it from the ceiling on one end I've got that bracket on at the bottom and for this next step I'm going to open up the awning the reason why I haven't been doing this outside is because it's been rainy off and on and I've just been doing this as I have a little bit of time 
So I'm also not doing it in the steps that they say because their directions are, the product seems like it's really good for the money. The directions seem pretty bad. And so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rail up top where the awning will feed up there. And then the awning feeds into the uh, roller arm as well at the same time, the fabric. My kit came with three of these that makes up the span for my 13 foot awning. So it's going to be a lot less than that. So those screws, pre-drilled holes are at the top. And then it suggests that you place that at the very top of these brackets, top of the bracket to where the top of the other bracket would go. See, they, they don't suggest putting in that bracket right there because they want you to be able to feed the awning in to that channel. But I have a different plan. I believe it'll be easier. So I'm going to put up two of these. And once those two are up, I'm going to feed the awning all in except for the third piece. And then with this hanging down, I'll feed the awning in and then screw it into place. One thing I am going to use is I'm going to use butyl tape behind that. It says to use some kind of caulk or silicone behind it. And let me tell you why. Because water will come down off the roof and it'll come down behind these brackets and you'll have water coming down the wall of your trailer. So I measured the gap between this upper bracket and that upper bracket to put these strips in here and you come up with two and a half inches short on the total difference which makes sense because you don't want it right up against the bracket so i need to leave a one and a quarter gap on this side and a one and a quarter gap on that side now your kit may be different so i would highly recommend you measure I'll show you how i attach this butyl tape butyl caulk um, this is one of the three strips in my case and it comes almost like a two-sided tape. It comes with a wax barrier on it, at least the way I bought it. I think you can buy it as a similar as a caulk, but this is a tape. Then you just take off what you need. So you, I'm going to leave this wax side on here until I'm ready to attach it. All right. The only thing left to do is I'm going to put the awning in and use that cord that came with the kit to do that. And then I'm going to put that last strip of metal on with the awning on it and screw it on in place. And then also I'm going to wind these. Now surprisingly, I found another video of a company called On Lux, which I guess is the supplier of this and maybe the parent company of this Alico awning. And it had better directions on the video and i watched them a bit but uh still not as detailed as what i'm providing here and we've got it slightly out on this end as you can see here This is truly a slow and steady wins the race here. Remember there was a seam up there. So go slow when you get to there. Again, this is much easier with two people. So this was my technique here, was to go ahead and prep the last one and be, have it ready to put on. I pull off this butyl tape and it'll expose my butyl caulk. My butyl, my, I pull off the protector and it'll expose my butyl tape, rather. And <clears throat> I'm going to thread it and then I'm going to screw it on.
That actually worked out very nicely, especially with one person, like I said. Slow and steady. You don't want to tear that on, and, and any time that you're in fear of doing so, stop what you're doing. I really don't know if this is going to work, but I guess I'll die trying. So the idea is to um, take the awning roller off, and you stick a screwdriver through this hole, the other hole. There's a hole to do that. And then there's a direction, there's a sticker on here that says which way to turn. 15 rounds. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I thought I had the right one. Let's do this one. So we'll leave the bolt right here. I'm going to hold the roller between my legs. And then I'm going to turn this 15 times. The screwdriver was there, so one, two, fifteen. Fifteen. And this is where you need two people again. Or an innovative way to do it. So I'm able to guide this right back in here, and this is under load, so you don't want to let go, you might have a screwdriver in your eye. And that bolt then locks it back in. We'll move to the other side. We're going to do the same thing. But this one has the lock on it here. And uh, then it's the same method that we're going to tighten it with. But you do have to put the lock in the right position to tighten this one. This lock, you want to flip it down this way. And then put it under tension. And again, there's an arrow, but which way to turn this, we're going to turn it that way. bolt back in there. We're going to be in the dark, aren't we? Those bolts have nylon threads in them, so they should stay. Well, I nearly forgot I have a light out here, so just about finished threading this through. So I'm sticking it the rest of the way there. That got me to the end, I believe. Let's go down here and see what it looks like. Now I used another trick because I was doing this as one person. It didn't come out all the way. But what I did was uh, I hung a weight right here. In this case, some protected vice grips. That kind of helped pull this down and over. That helped me get this done with spin that a little bit. And it came out on the other side. That's what I just did. Gave it a little spin. Popped out right down there. So it'll have two points here. And it'll tuck a, a groove down into this into this next channel and you'll feed another rod through there so there's not a pocket for that but that's the way that, that works so I'm going to work on that a bit this is the plastic tool they give you to poke that down in there to create another channel so you can put that rod down it it's harder to get this rod down through this gap once you poke that in there so they suggest making it a lot more flat and pointed and then around the end over. I'll show you that what that looks like. I'm going to use a box cutter to do that. You see how the end looks now? Skinned it down, but I rolled it over so it's not going to tear on anything. And that'll go through those gaps better. So you might want to use that technique on the other ones too. But in this case, I am going to use it on this one. I didn't do it on the other two, but that gap's a lot tighter. Feeding, feeding it into this groove here. And this is how this works right here. This plastic paddle is pushing it in the groove and then you push a little along you do a little more and then almost lastly here you want, might be wondering what to do with the strap that they gave you and it came with a little screw that was in it well that screw stays in there and it goes into the third channel in your pipe and I know that seems ridiculous but it'll just sort of stay in there so we so put that in there um, and I think we're done. So I'm going to test it and then I'll show it to you.
Well, I did finish it, even though it got dark on us. And I'll show this again in the daylight here in a moment. My neighbor's having some trees taken down. So here's one thing that I figured out, you know, how high is this going to be when you collapse it? How high is that arm going to be when you collapse it? I apologize for the noise in the background. They're taking down some trees next door. That's all determined by this bolt right here. It's just a stop bolt that comes in the kit. So it's just uh, you, after you get done, you bolt that through and you are the one to drill it through there. So you need to determine that you shut the shut the awning and then determine your height on what that should be and then drill that hole. Flip this down. Note, I've got this to the perfect height for my rig by putting in those stop bolts that I talked about earlier. And then you unlock these clasps on the back. Then you pull down on this. Until you get it where you want it. And the good thing about this is that you can always stop it where the clasp is exactly where you want it to be, the, the lock and unlock mechanism. So what I did was I slid that rafter bar into place and now I'm going to slide the other rafter bar into place. This one's getting a little bit tight because I haven't moved this up yet. Slide the rafter bar on up into its catch, which has a button right here. Now it's fully engaged. And then you can adjust the awning for your, where you want it. One thing that you want to check is your door. I have a square door, so I'm probably going to put a, a roller right here so it will never tear my awning. The other thing you want to do once you have this done is apply some pressure here if I had two hands apply pressure here and then tighten this rafter into place and the same with the other side as mentioned you want to make sure that this gap over here is the same as the other side mine ended up being two and three quarters to there and uh, make sure the cord is fully in on the other side and it was I can trim it off over here and then you put these self-tapping set screws in this is where I chose to put them because it didn't drill another hole into the camper, but drilled a hole up into the track and it didn't it didn't go through the top. So there's no additional hole in the top for, for weatherproof. And uh, that'll just about wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.